Hi YouTube, welcome to MA Academy 64-bit Linux assembly language tutorial series. This is the first tutorial in this series and in this tutorial I will show you guys how to add two numbers using registers. Now I'm assuming you already know what registers are and you have some basic knowledge of computer architecture such as CPU, registers, memory addressing, etc. And by the way for this tutorial series I will be using the NASM assembler which comes pre-installed on Kali Linux and Mac OS. But if you're using some other distributions of Linux or Windows, then you can install NASM on them as well. So let's get started. So let me open my terminal in here. Let's go to desktop. Currently you can see the desktop is empty. So let's create the file nano and let's call it add.nasm. So in here you can see that the extension of my file is .nasm. Uh, so since um, I see that I will be using the nasm assembler for this tutorial series, so the extension of my file has to be .nasm or .nasm. So let's press enter. Now, if you are familiar with some high-level programming languages like C and C++, you know, so you know that in C and C++ everything executes inside the main function. So this is the function that it starts uh, where your program starts and all the functions they come inside this so you can um, call whatever function you want inside the main function but main function is where the program starts so the same goes with this assembly language using NASM so in here the first thing that you do is you have to specify the starting point so you say global underscore start so this underscore start is the label which says this is where my program starts so global underscore start, this defines the label where our program starts. Let's think of it as a main function. So in here we are saying underscore starts. So it means that our program will start from here. Now, in other programming languages like C, C++, you can define your instructions and you can define your variables in the same place. So it doesn't matter, but in when you're coding an assembly language, you have to specify your instructions in one part of the code and the variables in the other. Now the place where you specify the section dot text, so where you specify the instructions, it is called the text dot text section. So whatever follows the dot text section, it is your instructions. Things like moving data into and out of registry, memory, uh, shifting characters, jumping, etc. So all those things comes inside or under the dot text section. But if you want to define variables, you can specify that under the section dot data so dot data it's where you define variables such as a example for example you can say a is equal to 10 b is equal to hello etc so all those variables that you define it comes under the dot uh, data section now for the first couple of tutorials i wouldn't be using variables so i will delete this for now being from the third tutorial onwards we will be using this data section i just mentioned it in here so that you would know uh, the different sections in assembly language and so that you could better understand the dot text section in here. So let me delete it. Now in assembly language, um, or should I say in NASM, when you want to write a comment, you start it using a semicolon. Now if you're familiar with C or C++, you define it using two forward slashes. In Python, you do it using this hash symbol. But when you're using NASM, you specify the comments using this semicolon character. So in here, the first thing what we do is that we want to move data into the racks or the RAX register. So let's type a comment. So you can type it like move data to racks register. Now the comments, this is the, so if you're not familiar with programming, then the comment, this is uh, the program does not execute these instructions or these lines in here. So this uh, lines, this line in here, it's not instruction, sorry, this is a comment. It is just for the programmer to understand what this code does. This is not uh, executed by the assembler. Now the next line we say move racks 10. So in here what it does is it takes 10 and puts it inside the racks register. Now the format of this is like this. So you say move and then you say the destination and then you say the source in here the source so whatever is uh, on the right side of the comma in here on the right side whatever comes 
it is the source and on the left side is the destination so we are saying take 10 and move it to racks so the source is 10 and the destination is racks so we are saying take 10 and put it in the rax register now on the next line let's say we want to move um, data again move this time we want to move data to rbx register so how do we do that it's same instead of using the rax register we will be using the rbx register so this time let's say five so what it does is it takes five and puts it inside the rbx register so five is the source rbx is the destination it takes five and puts it in the rbx register now what we want to do is uh, we want to add these two numbers so how do we do this we type add and then racks and then rbx so what it does in here is it takes the contents of the source which in this case is rbx and it adds it to the destination register which is the racks so it takes five which is in the rbx and it adds it to the rax which is 10 so rbx plus rx so 5 plus 10 is 15. now at last what you want to do is we want to exit so the exit syscall is move racks 1 and then end 0x 80. so when you are moving this one into the racks register and then the end 0x 80 so what it specified is that we want to exit out of our code so this is how nasm knows uh, to exit from your code now let's save it so what we have to do so now we have only this add.nasm file so we have to use nasm first to compile it into a link file or into an object file so nasm the command is nasm the option is filth 64 and add.nasm dash o add.o so this is the assembler that you're using so fill 64 in here it uh, specifies that we will be working with the 64-bit architecture and then this is the, our file add.nasm dash o is for output and add.o this is the object file that will be created as a result of this instruction in here so now if i do an ls you can see that there is my nasm add.nasm and then there is this add.o so this is my object file now we have to convert this object file into an executable and in order to do that we have to use the ld tool so ld this time you will say add.o dash o and then add so this is the tool that you will be using which is called ld the name of the file is add.o which is an object file and dash o is the uh, specifies the output and in this case the output is add so let's press enter and if i press an lsl you can see that there is my the nasm file there is my object file and then there's my executable so you can see that it's also in green so we have add our executable so let's run it we can see that uh, we can run it there's no errors now uh, what I, I will be doing is that for this tutorial series i will use the gdb tool so you will using gdp i will debug and analyze the code so you can understand better what this code does now gdb q tui and dash add so this is the tool that we will be using gdb we will use the dash q and dash tui option because we want to use the tui mode so let's press enter so the first thing once you do it we have to set the as this assembly flavor so i will be using lintel flavor so you can use this command called uh, you can use this instruction set this assembly flavor until after that we have to specify a breakpoint so we want to specify our breakpoint at the start so let me open this quickly in here and uh, let me open this file add.nasm so in here you can see that i specified underscore start and this is where our code started so the, what this break underscore start it means is that we want to start our analysis or our debugging from this part in here which is underscore start let's press enter type and run to run it and we want to see the layouts of asm so this asm is for assembly language so you want to see our assembly language we also want the layout of regis so this shows our registers so the first this is my assembly layout and this is my general uh, sorry this is my uh, registers layout so currently you can see that there is nothing in here the racks register is empty and the rbx register they are both empty so we are at the first line of our code which is move a into ex now a in as uh, in hexadecimal is 10 
So the first, uh, remember the first instruction we said move 10, move racks 10. So what it does is um, it takes 10 and puts it into the RAX register. So A is 10 in hexadecimal. Now, in order to move to the next instruction, uh, in order to execute this and move to the next instruction, we have to type as a step I in here. So let's press enter. So you can see that we have moved to the next instruction and now the racks register shows the contents of it, which is 10 in decimal. And this in here, the A is in hexadecimal. So you can see this 0x, it means it's in hexadecimal. So it's 10 in decimal and it's 0xA in hexadecimal. So the RAX now contains 10. RBX is 0, but uh, this instruction, it says move 5 into the EBX register, which is this one in here. So if I do another, uh, if I press enter and uh, move over this instruction, it will, you can see that uh, we will see that 5 will move in here in this, instead of this 0 in here. So let me press enter. Now you can see that 5 comes inside the RBX register. The next instruction, what it does is it adds RBX into racks. So it put, takes the contents of RBX, which is the source, and puts it into the RAX, which is the destination. Now the RBX holds 5 and the RAX holds 10. So it should be 15. And 15 and hex is F. So it should say F and it should show 15. Now let's press enter to move to the next instruction. And now you can see that uh, as it says, move RBX into RAX. The RAX is now 15 and it's 0xf, which is in hexadecimal. It's also it means 15. So this is how you can add two numbers in assembly language. This instruction, you saw that I typed in move RAX 0x1 and end 0xat. This is how we exit the code. So this is it for this tutorial, guys. In this tutorial, I will sh I showed you guys how to add two numbers using registers. And I did an analysis of it using GDB. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations, feel free to put it in the comments section below. And in the next tutorial, I will show you guys, by the way, how to uh, add three numbers or three or more numbers using these registers. So if you want to watch it, watch my next tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next one.